joining us on our last night of the Arts Festival, the Up Boys to Men for movie screening and cast Q&A question. So to give you guys a bit of background information, the United Singapore is established to stimulate unity and integration by bridging the gap between the local and international communities. Each year, our executive team helps to host island-wide campaigns with a different focus than the previous years. Tonight, let's turn our attention to film. So, on behalf of United Singapore, we proudly present the, the cast members from A Voice to Men 4, who will be partaking in this Q&A session. So, everybody, uh, can we please have a round of applause for our cast Woo! members, Joshua Tan, Maxi Lim, and Todd Rob. Every time on set with you is a torture because this guy will make so many mistakes and we have to bear with it. He does not learn his lines. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I think, uh, for example, I think for my military service, which is two years of national service, uh, there was this, because I serve as a military police, and there was this field camp. A field camp is something which you have to uh, be in the outback, in the forest, and uh, we have to survive three days of field camp without sleep. And uh, for one night, I remember there was nine turnouts. A turnout is uh, something which you uh, wake up from your sleep and you need to perform certain duties. So it happened nine times in a certain night. And uh, what I had to undergo was uh, something called a change parade. So they'll make you change like uh, what you call admin, which is shorts and t-shirt, and a full battle order, which is uh, your uniform with your uh, fuel pack and everything, and a certain other costumes. Uh. So after... <laughs> Uh, uniforms. So I remember I was so confused that uh, I, I remember I was naked and I put on my field bag and I wanted to go and fall in. So it was tough, uh, but one thing which I really learned, um, was, which was quite recent, uh, it was for the uh, Boys to Men 3 uh, training. One of our instructors told us, you know, um, no matter how we can, no matter how hard we push you guys, but it's only for a moment and that moment will pass. And uh, this is something that I take back away from this training. Uh, okay, uh, I, I think I will share a hardship that uh, I, I believe the three of us experience uh, because we're young actors in Singapore and uh, currently this is our fifth or sixth year in the industry and uh, it's always very difficult to be recognized initially and uh, have the chance to act in productions and movies and uh, music videos and stuff. So in the beginning, I believe uh, when we all got the role for our voice men, all of us were at crossroads in our life. Like Maxi, he was about to give up acting. Uh, he told his mom that, uh, give me five years. If I can become a professional actor, then you let me do it. But if I can't, then I'll go back to my 9 to 5. And then uh, me and Josh, we were about to go overseas to study. Uh, basically, our lives were all at a crossroads. Uh, but somehow or rather, uh, we believed in our boys to men and we worked hard at it. And uh, somehow or rather, it worked out. And we're here five years later, still living our dream as actors. So uh, it's amazing. Uh, and it's also with the support of a lot of Singaporeans. And not just Singaporeans, Malaysians, people from Brunei, Taiwan. Uh, even Japan sometimes we meet at our fan meets and it, it really touches us to know that uh, a very Singaporean local story is able to touch people from around the uh, different places. So, yeah, yeah I, I believe that um, most people who go through NS will, will find that they meet a lot of people who they won't ordinarily meet in their walks of life. So, uh, for example, people from different religion or culture uh, you don't really hang out with them day to day outside, but in NS you have to, and you you have to assimilate and you have to cooperate. So I think it's a really good exercise in learning how to integrate and how to be friends with everyone. So it's it's really important. So, what was the original question again? <laughs> I got a bit distracted. Oh, you talk like politician, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This not your election, eh? Bro. Yeah, I think the next GE, uh, you can touch, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you vote for me, bro. <laughs> yeah, vote for me. Yeah, we will be called the after party. <laughs> okay, not, not, okay, not funny. Okay. Not, not okay. Maybe don't, let's not unveil our political plans for now. Uh, let's moving back to AVTM. Sorry, what was the original question again? Uh, so, like, you guys faced a lot of hardships during your journey. Yeah. So, how did having people around you from different walks of life help you through that? Okay, we talk about the confinement times. Uh. Uh, okay, whenever uh, every guy enters uh, NS, right, military service, he has to go through basic military training for three months. And then the first time you go in, right, for two weeks, the initial two weeks, you're not allowed to book out. So uh, you have to transform from a civilian into a soldier and uh, kind of get used to the life inside before they let you out. So within that two weeks, right, you have to work with people that you don't know, that you just know. You sleep with them in the same bunk, you shower with them, 
you know how they smell intimately. Uh, you sleep in the jungle with them, you eat with them every day. And uh, I guess it's through all this struggle that you realise that struggle brings people together. Because misery loves company. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the next question was, how has your perspective towards NS changed through your service term? Oh, military police. Yeah, Max, step up. Um, wow, wow. Okay, uh, um, I think first of all, I always thought that NS is going to be a uh, very short. This is my, the advice which I got. A lot of people say, ah, you know, yeah. But when I was there, uh, wow, the two years really felt very long. But because, why it felt long? Because we were using every day fulfillingly. You know, because uh, when you're having your typical life, your civilian life, you tend to waste a lot of time procrastinating, doing things which are not important. But in the military, you have to wake up very early, like uh, 5, 5, 5.30 a.m. and uh, you have to sleep early. And you're really utilizing every moment, every time. And um, one of the things which I, I, I thought of is, uh, because a lot of our female friends, are, they get to not do the national service, so they get to further their studies. And initially I thought that, well, um, I was at a losing end, you know, because while well, my friends were like getting study, getting go overseas. But that two years which I was doing army, it, it's not wasted. Because once I, I, I came out of it, uh, I was more mature, um, I'm more of a re responsible person. So I managed to catch up. And um, yeah, I think your employers will take you more seriously also, to know that you're a more responsible person after your NS. Yeah, I'm glad to see that Maxi thinks that he's gotten more responsible over the year. Yeah. Uh, good for you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess for me, uh, one, one misconception I used to have was that NS would be a complete waste of time. And he, to be frank, even when I was inside the service, I, I would feel that it's a waste of time. But looking back now that I've gone, what, five, seven years out of service, I, I really feel that NS was one of the most enjoyable times of my life. And I do miss my buddies, and, and some of the memories that stay are really the dearest. And yeah, even like for our boys to men, when we, we shot one and two, I think it reflects some of that, the brotherhood and the brotherhood and the memories. So yeah, I think NS is always a special time in every guy's life that they don't enjoy when they're serving it, but when they look back, it's one of the best times of their lives. Uh, it, it goes from uh, re rejection to acceptance. When you first go in uh, as a civilian, you're like, oh my god, I have to be a soldier right now. And uh, like in the US, to be a soldier, uh, you actually go and sign up to be one, right? You, don't have, you are not conscripted. But in Singapore, uh, because we are a very small country, uh, and uh, we don't have a lot of people, so our people are our only resource, so uh, the men have to step up to serve the country. So when we do it, right, a lot of us initially, you will feel this, uh, like, you have to get used to it. Lah. But I think about six months to a year in, then you really get into it. And uh, I, I have a lot of great memories that you spend in the jungle, like at night, although it's raining, and then uh, you're soaked wet with your friends down there, you would, all of us would just start laughing, telling jokes, and uh, all these memories, when you think back, it, it really puts a smile on your face. Uh. Yeah. But, if it, but when you're going through it, right, it's like really difficult. But after you look back, uh, I guess hard times make for great memories. Thank you. So the next question is, what unexpected lessons did you learn when you met new people in NS? It's a very good question. The unexpected thing which I learned during NS is I learned how to act during NS. <laughs> yes, I, all my are you acting really skills is I picked up from NS. First, you have to sometimes, you know, king. Uh, you know, this is what you call to... Uh, why, why when you talk about king, you look at me? What was the term to king? What's the proper word to English king? Uh, mal malingering. Malingering. Malingering, yeah. Yes, sometimes, yeah. you know, uh, perhaps not myself, but you see how your friends malinger to their uh, sergeants, you know, how they act sick, you know. A sergeant, today I, I, got, I got diarrhea or I got fever. So you see, oh, okay, so this is how a sick person look like. So, okay, that, that point being taken down. And uh, for our boys to men, I actually play a geek. And you can see in real life, I'm not a geek. So a lot of people will say, wow, hey, Maxi, how do you do that uh, geek role so well? You know, everybody thought that you are really such a person in real life. So, but they didn't know, you know, um, during my national service, I get to see the real geeks, you know, the people like that, the Wayang kings, you know, and this is how I, I yeah, basically picked up my acting. And uh, for a lot of times, you know, um, when we see how our sergeant Tekan, our friends, Tekan is a lingo, uh, which is like uh, punish, right? Yeah, punish our friends and a lot of times after the whole thing ended, we will go back to our rooms, our bunk and we will reenact the whole scene. You know, just to, yeah, for laughs, you know. And uh, yeah, so yeah, unexpected thing, my acting skill from 
National Service. Yeah. For, for me, I used to think that um, NS would be really boring, be a lot of drills and just uh, mundane things every, that you do every day. But um, I think during BMT, especially, you learn a lot of cool stuff. Like, you get to fire a weapon, you get to throw, throw, a, grenade, throw, throw, grenade. Yeah, throw a live grenade, which actually may kill you if you throw it wrongly. So these are cool things, cool things that you would never get to experience outside in the civilian life, you know? Only in, in the army you get to experience such cool stuff. So I think for the guys, uh, and maybe some ladies who are interested, you know? I think the army is pretty cool, and if you want to experience something different, something dynamic, then try out the army, yeah? Yeah. You can sign up. <laughs> you can sign up at the booth next door. Okay. Uh, I think one misconception that I had previously about uh, the army, like uh, especially Singapore army, because uh, I, when I was young I didn't really know much about military, and my impression is like, okay, we are a small country, so our force should not be very strong. Uh, maybe it's just like uh, like for deterrence, you know, just just to show that we have an army. But after uh, entering the army and uh, like through our voice men, I got to know about the uh, naval divers. They are basically like the Navy SEALs equivalent in Singapore and they train with the Navy SEALs in the US as well. So when I actually saw how they train and uh, tr from there you get to see some of what the commandos do as well. You get to know that actually Singapore has a really, really a formidable fighting force uh, and, and the people inside are really like uh, bad, bad, bad ass. Uh. Bad ass uh, they're really bad ass and they're ready to go. Kind of. like, I, I never knew there were Singaporeans like that. Until you get to see the naval divers and the commandos when they train and you see the, the fire in their eyes. And you know they are doing this for the country. That's actually a very interesting uh, thing that uh, Singapore is facing. Because Singapore, uh, we are made out of people that come from, uh, our ancestors come from different places. You know, So uh, I think right now we, we even have like Caucasians, we have Australians, uh, Joshua is an Australian. You know, and uh, we have people from India, from China, from everywhere. But uh, basically the criteria is if you want to be Singaporean, you want to uh, live in our country, you want to be part of our country, and you're a guy you serve NS, to show us that you, you want to be a part of this place. Uh, because uh, giving two years of your life and uh, being a soldier for a country, that really says a lot. So uh, I guess that's uh, something that will inculcate that Singaporean identity in the, into new citizens. Yeah, I gotta agree with Tosh right there, and I think it's also an excellent question because uh, when we were serving, we see people from all sorts of races and countries, like people from China, India, myself. I would, I'm a PR, so I think it's it's really cool to see like sometimes Angmo when they when they talk, like they use English to talk. It's really really funny, yeah. and sometimes it also creates a bond in a way that because we've gone through the same thing, so we we know each other better through the struggles, and also we just grow closer. So I, I do really agree that NS is a great um, way of forging bonds and uh, it's creating a very distinct Singaporean spirit in all of us. In everyone who's gone through NS, we all know the same things and we all feel the same way. Yeah, I think one attribute to the movie success is actually because a lot of guys in Singapore has done NS. You know, there's your father, your brother, or you usually know someone who has been through it. So perhaps if you are a lady, you know, you want to see, hey, how, how did my brother went through these two years? So a lot of people will go and watch all these movies. And um, I think, you know, after army, you know, whenever you meet some, a guy, a, a new guy friend, you know, you can always have a common topic to talk about. You can say, hey, wow, so what do you actually serve during your army days? Perhaps you could say that, uh, oh, I'm actually a commando, I'm a military police. So that, it creates a bond, you know, something relatable among uh, different Singaporeans. Yeah. And do you guys have any final remarks about like the movie or your experience or just like anything you want to say to the audience? Uh, we hope you guys enjoy the movie and uh, yeah, and, yeah, enjoy the movie. Yeah, I think a lot of effort was put into our boys to men for not just that even one, two, and three, but we do appreciate everyone who's coming down and having a good time here at Botanic Gardens. Uh, it's a lovely setting, you know, nice big screen, good weather, so hopefully you guys will sit back, relax and enjoy. And we want to thank you guys for having us as well. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for being such great hosts. Yeah, thank you so much for coming down. Like, one last round of applause for our um, cast members. So, I feel like we really were able to learn about the NS experience, especially those of us who have not or will not go through it. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.